I'm Mathematician Sway, come back to another video. Today, once again, series on linear functions. And we're going to talk about the easiest linear function you could probably think of, so-called identity function. And you probably never heard of the term identity if you're just a student in high school. What an identity is, we're going to talk about today. It's just a special name for this kind of function here. It's a really special function, to be honest. Uh, interesting in its own regard and also we are going to talk about graphing this function today and table of values and stuff like this so it's going to be quite interesting a lot of um, stuff you are going to need even for higher calculus in your school life so what is the identity function that we want to talk about today exactly it's the function that's simply f of x being equal to x yeah and that's basically it think back what a function is I told you that a function is basically just some, some kind of machine, just like a calculator. We are going to grab also those x values today that we are going to take out of the domain, for example the real numbers, put those numbers into here and our machine is going to do something. It's going to give us um, numbers from the codomain out on the other side. We are going to collect those um, pairs of values in a table of values today and then we can use those to put them into a coordinate system and create ourselves like a trend line which is representative for our identity function. So long story short table of values now meaning we are going to grab ourselves certain x values from the domain Let's say we're going to get ourselves um, five x values and then after plugging those into our little machine f we're going to get y values out on the other side. And most of the time with those table of values we want to make it kind of convenient for us and say it's, it's symmetric with the same step size. So we're going to start with zero and then we're going to say where well, step size is one. So one and two are the next numbers and into the negative direction the same thing. Step size one, so negative one, negative two. And those values are going to be representative for what we're going to put into the coordinate system. Now we are going to see how our function behaves under plugging values into it. Let us go in and get started with the positive values in zero because students hate negative values in normal case. And yeah, we are going to try and see if we can find a pattern for this function here and then everything else is going to fall from the sky basically. So let us start with the number zero. What is going to happen if we plug in x being equal to zero? Okay, in normal case in your school life you are just going to denote it like this f of zero but if you write it out like this um, if you are a teacher teaching somewhere I encourage you to write it out like this just because students can see way better what they have to do basically so this is like the thing that students have the most problems with um, understanding what it means to have f of zero they don't understand that we are plugging in numbers for the x values basically now and this is what this notation indicates basically. So we are going to say mm, okay all the things x in here are going to be zero okay so we are going to plug zero into this x value and we are going to apply this rule to all the x values on the right hand side meaning what's going to happen if we plug zero into all the x's here well it's just going to be zero obviously. So our first pair is 0, 0, meaning 0 is our y value out of the codomain, our range. Okay, now we're going to continue this process with 1. What about f of 1? Well, think back to what I just said. We are going to take the number 1, put it into each and every x value on the right hand side. Well, it's just going to be 1, right? We take 1 and put it into here, into x, well, it's just 1. Cool. Okay, maybe we can already see a certain pattern. Let us continue this for number two and then let's see um, if we can find a pattern of some sort. If we put the number two into all the x's right here, well, it's just going to be two. It's as easy as it is. So what our function does probably, and it does do so, is we put numbers into here and it's going to spit out the same number on the other side. I, I mean, we put zero into here and got zero out on the other side. We put two into here, got zero, uh, two <laughs> out on the other side. What's going to happen then if you plug in negative one? Well, into all the x's, you're going to get negative one. Negative two into all the x's gives you negative two. And this basically concludes it. And this is what it means for something to be an identity. Identity in mathematics just means that um, you can use this identity on something and it doesn't change anything. Think to the number one back, it's the multiplicative identity. If you multiply something by a one, it's just going to be the something in itself. If you have only one times three apples, then you have three apples, all right? One times three is just three. Same thing happens here. If we 
use values on this function, it's just going to return ourselves the values yet again. And this is the magic behind this identity function, f of x being equal to x. And like I said before, it's interesting in its own regard because those identities are unique, meaning they exist only once in certain mathematical structures. Just like number one, it's, it's unique. There's no other number which you can multiply some other number with such that you can get the same number out on the other side. Doesn't work. One is the only thing working that way, the real numbers for example. Now we are going to plot ourselves this function in some way using coordinate system. Meaning we are going to get ourselves an x-axis which is down here, okay, the independent variable and then on our y-axis we are going to get y. Now we are going to put numbers on here some, some kind of scale. All the parts must be equidistant, for example, all are one centimeter apart, for example, not one centimeter here and then suddenly two centimeters here. Don't do that. This is not something that you won't do. Okay, you're gonna lose out on points if you do that. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, and now we are going to put some numbers on here. So uh, one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and last but not least, one, two, three, and then four. But we don't need to go up to four, honestly, because, well, we only go up to two. Okay, now we are going to take our pairs of values and we're going to see if we can find a point in the coordinate system. Let us start with negative two and negative two. Okay, at first, okay, our x value was negative two. Let us see on the x-axis where negative two is, it, it's here. And then our x value corresponds to the y value negative two. So going down to negative two, ah, here, here's our point that we were seeking. Okay, same should be for negative one and negative one. Okay, we are going to look for negative one. That's here, go down negative one and here's our point. Let's continue this process. You can already see a certain pattern here. Zero, zero, ah, that's, that's in the origin of the coordinate system. And then we are going to get one, one. This is here and here, it's exactly here. And then two, two up here and that's a done deal, I would say. We got this. And now we can play connect points, basically. We are going to get ourselves a certain trend line. Um, and this is it. This right here is our identity function. It's basically just a line going upwards in a 45 degree angle from our well, x-axis, okay? So um, just as a little side note, this is what identity function does. And here, yeah, it's interesting in its own regard, like I said before. And you can now get yourself the strand line and say, well, I want to find out which x value corresponds to, um, I don't know, y being equal to negative four. Then you go to negative four, go over here. Since this function is um, one to one, we have talked about this before, okay, horizontal line test, we can also find its uniquely determined x value and it's going to be negative four, okay, just as a little example how you can make use of this graph to find certain points for yourself. And this basically concludes this video about the identity function. Next time we are going to go one step further and say, well, we don't have only the identity function, we are going to expand our knowledge that we have here to all the proportional functions there are. Meaning proportional functions are just linear functions that go exactly through the coordinate system's origin. The identity function is, an, uh, is a proportional function, but we also have, for example, this one right here, okay, which goes up a bit steeper, but it's also going to be a proportional function. But like I said, it's going to go up steeper. And the reason for that is because we are going to put a parameterization on our x. We are going to put something in before the x to kind of change the slope. It's called a slope of our linear function. This is what we are going to talk about next time. And you can find the whole playlist to the linear functions down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend, channel if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more, buy the CGS I create a support channel on Patreon. Also, if you know someone who has problems with linear functions, for example, calculus, etc., recommend them this channel and maybe uh, it's helpful to them. But in the next video, I'm with you guys. Flame the day. Ciao.